Welcome everyone. My name is Ivan Stanyo and I'm so happy that I can uh, greet uh, Greg Shamodi from Ludia Consulting here. Uh, Greg and I agreed that we would do a quick fireside chat to talk about an interesting customer uh, story and a project that Greg and Ludia Consulting have been part of since 2018. Greg, welcome to, to the interview. Hey, thanks Ivan. Thanks for having me. Uh, super excited about this. Likewise. So Greg, uh, would you mind telling us a little bit more about, first of all, Ludia Consulting, what you do as a company? I know that you have a quite unique uh, angle, uh, what you do in the Dynamics channel, but also tell us a little bit more about your role at Ludia, uh, what you're responsible uh, uh, of uh, and your experience in the Dynamics uh, community and Dynamics world. Sure. So um, our CEO, Lucas, D Lucas Diaz, was on here with you um, not long, long ago, and um, he kind of went into more in detail about what Ludia represents as a company. Um, yeah, we're we're a small group of people. We're growing. Uh, we have about 14, um, 14 people now in the team, and we are dynamics experts. What, whatever um, whatever it is that is dynamics, we we are into it, and we focus mainly on um, projects that involve FNO and CE field service. Um, we're kind of, that's our niche. Um, and that's especially my niche is the, is this field service and, um, mobility inside of that as of the last few months, basically, or, um, since this project, basically that we're talking about here as a, as a case study almost. And, um, yeah, so I've just been focusing on uh, field service for the past two or three years. And um, recently I've, I've found my passion for the mobile side of it because, um, well, we'll get into that later, but just kind of started to realize where um, mobile comes in with, with field service and how in integral it is to the success of, a, of an implementation to have a, a solid mobile uh, product. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yeah, thanks for the intro. So uh, we, as you already mentioned, we're going to look at this from the point of view of almost like a case study. And um, I have to say to all the uh, watchers or viewers that uh, we kind of pose one main question that we will try to answer by the end of this interview. And that question is, if we can build a custom and complex mobile solution with no line of code, right? That's uh, That's kind of where we're trying to uh, get uh, with this story today. But before we get to the end and answer that question, could you tell me a little bit more about the project? Uh, what kind of customer it is? What industry? A uh, little bit more about uh, the entire uh, overview of uh, of the customer and the project that uh, you're part of. Absolutely, Ivan. Um, yeah, so unfortunately, you can't share the name of the of the customer for understandable reasons, but it's a top global um, service-based systems integrator company. And um, it's a pretty big project. Uh, there's 3000 technicians. Um, there will be 3000 technicians by the end of the full rollout and um, all the back office people supporting them, of course. So it's a huge implementation. Um, it is, the core of it is basically um, finance and operations um, and CE field service, but there's a ton of other moving components uh, such as power apps and reporting. And of course the mobile component legacy systems that the, that the client has that we had to integrate with. So um, it's enough to make your head spin sometimes, but you know, that's the, that's kind of the fun of it. And um, it's, it's really exciting. It's always a, it's always a new challenge. Mm -hmm. That Yeah, that really sounds like it's a complete overhaul of a system because you're going to cover ERP, uh, the customer engagement with field service, lots of power apps, reporting, mobility stuff. That must be really challenging. Could you name some of the biggest challenges that you've faced so far in the project? Well, the biggest challenge is just kind of accomplishing all of this, you know, and, and, and making sure that everything gets... Uh, gets delivered. So um, that's where RESCO was really uh, helpful or and the Woodford tool with um, for 
configuring the mobile solution, um, it was really helpful to to be able to roll out a solution to them, a mobile solution with basically the least amount of customizations. And um, that's what we've been focusing on um, because it's so easy to kind of get wrapped up and, and try to include everything in the, in the mobile application when in reality, it, it should be something that um, is barely noticeable to the technician in, in their everyday life. The, the goal should be to um, give them a tool that they right they barely notice they just uh you know they're it just performs the the bare minimums basically that they need to and and nothing more nothing less mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh then i'm i'm glad to hear that that uh that uh, you you chose this approach and i definitely want to talk a little bit more about that in just a second uh but before we get there uh could you maybe describe a little bit more uh how the mobile project looked like in terms of complexity? Was it a lot of customizations? What, 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 what was there a lot of logic, what, business logic? Did you have to configure the forms a lot? Did it include a lot of entities or tables, how we should call them now, right? Uh, how, how did the mobile piece look like? Sure. So the mobile piece itself is not super complex and um again that was that was kind of the goal mm -hmm. um having said that there is a lot of customization around the the booking entity and the booking form uh views so that the technician sees uh relevant information at all times um <clears throat> so most of the customizations and configuration has been around the booking and the work order entity in the system, but there's also some minor changes on basically all of the forms that the technician comes across. And I guess the biggest um, change in the whole whole application is all the stuff that we took away, that we mm -hmm. took out of the out of the solution and, and kind of cleaned it. So um, pared it down to the essentials and, and what 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 the technician really needs in their day to day work. Mm -hmm. And that that's really interesting. I want to uh, talk a little bit more about that. So you took the field service mobile project as a base, right? right. And it comes with a lot of pre-configured stuff. And many times that stuff is kind of like things that people find like, okay, we might use it, but we don't know. But you were very proactive there and you actually started stripping off that mobile project, right? And you actually removed some pieces. I mean, pretty much it's the, yeah, like you said, the um, out of the box mobile project is a, is a great starting point, mm -hmm. but of course, depending on the customer, they have different needs. And um, for example, if, if a customer is not using um, IOT services or anything like that, that whole section can be removed because otherwise it's just there as a distraction or potential um, error point for the um for the technician to click on and, and do something on accident. So um, we we were really focusing on on technician experience. Mm -hmm. That was the main goal really of the of the mobile implementation. And um, we, we we did a lot of uh, customizations in order to help them avoid mistakes. And um, uh, you know we, we really wanted to focus on data quality. Um, a lot of uh, validations and rules were put into place so that uh, data is either automatically populated or uh, there's validations running on the entered data so that it it is um, you know it, it is a good good entry basically and then it mm -hmm. improves uh, data quality um, and also yeah just customizing the site map of course taking away a lot of options. Um, but also on the forms, making it, you know, not overwhelming to the technician when they first look at it, only information that is relevant to that specific booking that they're on is displayed. Everything else is hidden and it's conditionally displayed based on obviously other information that we can, you know, base those show and hides on. Mm -hmm. 
So, so it, it really totally makes sense. And it really sounds like your approach was let's keep the application as simple as possible, only show to the users what's necessary at given time or situation or context that at, at which they're interacting with the application um, and to bring as few customizations as possible. Is that pretty much correct? Oh, absolutely. That you really mm-hmm. described it well, and that it really allowed us to be super flexible with the with the mobile side of the project. It was actually progressing at a much faster pace than than the rest of the components, like the you know customer engagement changes or obviously FNO changes. That's because with um, the advantage of advantage of Woodford and the GitHub integration, we were able to really quickly. Um, basically try out or implement changes, see if something works, see if it doesn't work, um, figure out what works and just release it. And uh, after it passes uh, testing, it's good to go basically. And that was a much faster um, and agile release cadence than what CE was allowing for basically. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. I forgot to mention that in my introduction, but I am a customer engagement consultant. So that's kind of, that's definitely my, my background and my, that's where I come from. Mm -hmm. So more on the consulting side than the developer side, I think that's important for the rest of the, uh, of the interview, uh, that this is, this is clear. uh, I am not a developer. That is very important to point out that Mm -hmm. (laughs) as soon as I see code, um, I'm lost. So, um, all of this basically, uh, most of it was done by me. There were people before me on the project that that did um, customizations, but there's no code in there. <laughs> mm-hmm. So it's all yeah, it's all on save rules, on load rules, everything, all of mm-hmm. that. So lots of rules, lots of customization, but the idea or the plan was not to use too much custom code, right? Could you elaborate maybe a little bit more? on the reasons why was the idea to keep the application kind of clean of custom code and stay within the limits of of the technology and the tool the woodford tool that you mentioned for all the uh, viewers who are not familiar woodford is the name of a configuration tool that is part of the the mobile uh, toolkit right so um you know the assumption is that Microsoft and, and Resco, of course, provide a field service specific product un, under the field service name, of course. So we didn't need, and this company is basically doing field service. So, you know, we didn't need to stray too far from the out of the box anyways, but still we wanted to stay really close to it um, in case of future updates and upgrades and um it's just a lot. It was just a lot easier to maintain the whole solution without code in it. Um, as I said, with the releases, with testing, with all of that, it just made it a lot more agile. And um, never, we never really felt the need for offline uh, JavaScript because of the um, because of the um, opportunities and the and the capabilities that the form rules and the row scripts and all the all the configuration that I as a consultant could do mm-hmm. inside of Woodford um, basically was able to substitute for for all the other things that you would traditionally accomplish with with code. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Uh, then that that brings me to another topic. So sure. you've been in in uh, in this business for several years. But I know that this was your very first project, like real life project that included Resco and the work with the Resco Woodford tool. Right. How did you find that? Was it easy? Was it too much? Was it very steep in terms of the learning curve? How was your experience learning the ropes of the Woodford tool? Right. So, um, well, to begin with, it hasn't necessarily been several years. And in this field, I've been a dynamics consultant for about three years now. Um, and um, so a few yeah, years, so okay. <laughs> few years, few years. Okay, let's, let's just, let's call it a few years. So uh, my previous experience with, uh, with Resco and Woodford was, uh, was limited to the 
to what was needed to pass the field service examination for our certification for Microsoft. Um, and obviously that was more in, in theory and just in a trial instance, you know, playing around. And I'm not gonna lie, it seemed a little intimidating at first, um, especially being fairly new to Dynamics. I was very happy that I'm getting more comfortable with configuring Dynamics and all of a sudden this whole new tool is thrown at me. So I was a little, a little bit, you know, hesitant, but then it really started to click after a while. And um, it's really, really not rocket science. And once um, you get a few very simple concepts down, then there's so much you can do in there. And um, there's so many cool things that you can accomplish for the, for the end users. Um, and just putting those little touches in there with, uh, you know, hiding fields conditionally or that was that's just an example, but there's so many tiny little things that just kind of can improve the the user experience, and um, yeah. So my my experience with it it was it was a steep learning curve. I I did spend a lot of time um, trying to only in the beginning trying to you know catch up. Um, mm -hmm. In hindsight, I wish I had done the Resco Academy before <laughs> this project, but obviously with the timing, it just kind of came out of nowhere for me. Uh, so for anyone listening, I definitely recommend going through that before uh, before diving deeply into Woodford. But um, what I can say is that there's so many resources out there from Resco um, to help you and to help that helped me obviously with the with the Resco wiki, the blogs, um, documentation, and and even support if you really need help. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I'm so glad you you named it uh, that yeah Woodford is a different tool, right? It's it comes from Resco Kitchen from our developers, uh, so it's a different tool. It requires some extra work and extra time to master it. But we at Resco believe that the investment in doing the work in the Woodford tool eventually pays off because the mobile experience, the mobile uh, requirements are very often much different to what the office experience or how we use uh, Dynamics 365 CE applications is. So we believe it makes sense to you know, put some extra time and effort into designing the application uh, and that way elevate the total experience of Dynamics 365 field service. So I, I'm glad you named it because I hear this quite often from customers or partners where, where they see like, oh, that's an extra work we have to put in there. And I'm like, yeah, definitely, you're right. That's an extra work, but we believe it's it's for a good reason. Yeah, I mean, I definitely agree with that. I think the it's it's definitely worth the upfront investment because, and it's not that much, honestly. It's not you know we're not talking about a huge, we're not talking about months or or years here. It's a few weeks, maybe if that. And um, and then once you once you kind of start to feel a little bit more comfortable in Woodford, then then that's when things really open up and, and you can venture out even more mm -hmm. inside of um, inside of Resco and Woodford. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like you had a plan. Let's stay out of custom code. Let's mm -hmm. use the default field service mobile project, kind of the different approach. Let's strip off everything that is not needed and simplify, simplify, simplify. But at the same time, you keep mentioning on, yeah, we had to bring a lot of logic, condition logic, showing fields uh, uh, based on different conditions and in different situations. Did you find that the tool and the technology gave you enough power or control over the application? Or were there any situations where you would like, oh, maybe we should we should uh, uh, employ some developers and bring them to the to the project to really use the custom code or or what wasn't it the case honestly it never even really came up um, because basically every requirement we were able to fulfill um, with configuration non-code configuration inside of inside of Woodford and the ones the few that we weren't we wouldn't have been able to do without, I mean, with code even, it, it was just um, 
a limitation of dynamics or or the data set or something and um so even code can have helped us there um so yeah absolutely it, it, it's it's super powerful and and as i mentioned to you before um in the past that we're only we're only utilizing um the core functionalities forms views you know all the rules and custom actions that go with that but we haven't even touched um any of the resco inspections or any of the resco add-ons um and and special capabilities um ai or anything like that so we're really just sticking to um sticking to what's there and um trying to make the best of it really mm -hmm. but i know from uh, our previous conversations that there there is one situation when you use custom code you know which one i mean we're actually integrating resco with power app oh well we tried but we never actually were able to okay. <laughs> work but i was gonna um that's actually a good point and that kind of ties in with the with the support experience um with resco and um uh what i'm trying to get at is we tried to we tried to yes uh integrate basically a power app and um it just um we were getting yeah it, it dead end into dead end and um it just wasn't working out understood when you ran into dead ends and you touched uh, on the topic of the topic of support uh, a little bit already uh mm -hmm. what was your primary source of help and again, just for the complete context, right? This was your fir first real project, a uh, big one, several thousand users, big mobile uh, uh, mobile project uh, that needed to be put, put together. And it definitely sounds like you were learning on the go, right? Yeah, what was your what? primary source of, uh, of uh, getting the knowledge and, uh, and helping you in situations where that were tough? Sure. So I want to say the primary source was definitely Resco Wiki mm -hmm. and the documentation there. Um, I tried to do as much as much uh, research and, and learning on my own as possible. And um, if we're talking about the dead end situations, then then obviously there's um, this whole evaluation um, process that I do. I, I used to work help desk and support, so I kind of... <laughs> you know, know how to reach out to how and when to reach out to help desk and, and support people. So I first tried to kind of um, uh, identify if it's a, if it's a RESCO problem or if it's a Microsoft problem and, you know, working with the mm -hmm. Dynamics field service, it could be um, that could, the, the problem or the issue could be on either side. So first step is that. Um, and if so now we're talking about a, a support scenario or, so, or there's a problem that I need to figure out. Um, again, I would try to, you know, find it on, on Resco, Resco's uh, resources, see if there's um, a blog post about that specific scenario, which a lot of times there was, or if it's described in the documentation. And if I really got stuck, then I would reach out to, to Resco support. And, um, and that was kind of my my last line of of help and they always came through and, and didn't have my back and they always saved the day basically so um i had a great experience with with resco support uh, multiple times with multiple folks over there um almost developed some some <laughs> personal relationships to, that's um, great to hear we're sending yeah. regards to lukas and marianne who i know you yeah. were working a lot with yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, you know, just one of those things when you're sitting there on a call and you're waiting for something to load, you have time to talk to them and, you know, they're, they're human. So it's just, that's, it's cool to talk to like-minded people. And um, yeah, so they were always very willing to help, always uh, very quick to respond to situations. And, um, and there was even one situation that was, um, that was super unique and it was only showing up on, on our environment and it was really hard to reproduce, but those guys somehow figured it out and um, delivered the fix and everyone was happy in the end. And that was the GitHub integration that was issue, the right? GitHub integration that just decided to break and um, it was 
I don't mean, no one's fault really. And uh, but the the rescue guys really um, help help me out with that. That's great to hear. So we're getting yeah. to the end. Uh, I think we covered the whole story from the very beginning to the situations where things uh, required uh, some assistance from from rescue support to make sure that this can go to the to the finish line, even though well, I know it's an ongoing project, right? And ongoing it's still, and yeah. to be fair, a lot of the, or some of the problems were because of my inexperience that I had to reach out and they were still extremely helpful with that. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very thankful. So the main question we asked is in, in the beginning. So I'll bring it uh, back to the conversation. Can Greg deliver a slam dunk by creating a complex mobile application without the use of single line of code? <laughs> well, I think I would, we would have to ask the technicians for that, but I hope the answer is yes. It and, sounds uh, like the application and the technicians are in good hands. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's it's very powerful. I think uh, there's a lot of possibilities in there, and and. I would struggle to think of a scenario where it wouldn't be enough to um, to do a uh, field service implementation with just um, with just uh, customizations. Obviously, there's scenarios when you will need code, but I think for the most part, with this approach, especially that we employed here, with really keeping it simple and and user focused, um, it was definitely. Um, mm -hmm. So it's definitely a yes. And can you tell the viewers why I use the slam dunk uh, yes. analogy? And I, I I just keep them waiting a little bit before you answer that question because sure, sure. we so, met a number of times. We used cameras all the time, but this yes. was pretty much how we interacted. So I had absolutely no clue until Lucas told me you know, what your previous career was. Right, so that's kind of uh, going back to when I was saying that it's only been a few years in dynamics. It's because um, I was a professional basketball player before this, and um, and I'm extremely tall. <laughs> so <laughs> I think uh, that's kind of what you're referring to there with the slam dunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's my background. I think that's kind of the one of the messages of this talk is if. As someone who's very new to the dynamic space and very new to even working, <laughs> not with, you know, working with my brain and not with my body, <laughs> like I was with, you know, before in basketball, if someone can, like me can, can do this, then, then basically everyone can. I think that's one of the messages here, right? Absolutely. And for everyone, you're kind of like going around it, but everybody... Greg was a really, really successful basketball player playing in a number of countries around Europe, but also playing in the United States uh, as part of your college period, right? And That's then right. a little yep. bit afterwards as well. So exactly. we have a double superstar here today, <laughs> a great wow. basketball player and a very talented dynamic CE consultant as well. That's, uh, that's very flattering, Yvonne. Thank you for that. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been a, it's been a crazy ride to transition from, from, you know, basketball 100% to CRM dynamics field service, whatever, 100%. So it's been a big change, but it's been, it's been fun so far. And, um, it's fun to use my skills that I've learned in, in sports and, and use them in this, in this field. Perfect. Greg, thank you Bye. so much for sharing the story. Yeah, one of the skills is giving interviews to people. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I'll work on my skills there to become a better interviewer. Uh, oh, and great. I really want to thank you for sharing the story, all the details and what your experience was, because this is really helping us at Resco to understand better how the real projects look like, how our partners approach different challenges. And that gives us a lot of inspiration how to improve our products and our technology. And that, that gives us a chance to learn a lot from you. Uh, Sounds great. I'm glad so, that, yeah, I'm glad yeah, I could be a part of this. Absolutely. And I hope to uh, meet you in person soon. Uh, sure. We agreed that we'll do a bike trip together uh, one day. That's right. right. <laughs> and by then, uh, I wish you all the best in your new career. 
uh, and look forward to catching up with you soon. Thank you, Ivan. It was great talking to you and uh, can't wait to continue this collaboration with you guys. Thank you. All right, Ivan. Bye. Bye.